So if you've identified white flies in your growing operation, well, this video here on Debaco University is gonna provide you with some beneficial insects to go about controlling those white fly pests that you're dealing with. All right, let's get into beneficial insects for white flies in cannabis production. So first off, this is all based off of a research article that you're welcome to check out following this reference and link uh, to look at some more of the materials, methods, and details provided in the original study. This will provide an overview. So first off, in general, uh, insects can be a challenge in greenhouse uh, production. Typically, the go-to for insects has been synthetic chemicals. However, due to strict legalizations and restrictions of pesticides, this is the driving force in the development of new, environmentally friendly, but yet profitable methods of pest control, which will be presented here. So first off, just some basics on the greenhouse study. This was conducted at the Agriculture University in Athens, and their uh, cannabis plants were grown in two different greenhouses, one is with the beneficials, one without the beneficial insects. This is the monoecious variety that was uh, utilized, and this also provides you with an idea of the temperature and humidity fluctuations in the greenhouses, which is important when you're looking at implementing a biological control measure such as these insects. So the release date for these insects, well, three weeks after transplantation, beneficial insects were released in the treatment greenhouse in order to assess the efficiency of the biological pest management, uh, the efficacy of the bi biological pest management. So white flies are going to be the focus here. Again, this research study did look at others, but they were identified in the greenhouse. This is generally what they look like, your simple identification, as well as general symptoms to look for if you're dealing with them as a potential pest. Now, the basic measurements that were occurred uh, were visual estimations of the infestation, recording the pest species populations, and the comparisons of infestations between the two greenhouses. Keep in mind that only the nymphs and adult stages of the pest were counted, not the egg stage for any of the insects they studied. And if you're curious on what insects you may have, this is a common group of insects that commonly affect uh, plants there, so you can identify them right here uh, through a quick visual guide. So how were the pest populations determined uh, of our white flies? Well, typically they were taken in the third, fifth, seventh, and ninth week of production. They were using a 1,600 times a microscope to quantify the uh, efficiency of the beneficial insects. And the average pest populations were measured on 10 plants, four leaves per plant per greenhouse in the study. So with any pest we're trying to deal with, it's very important to understand the life cycle of that pest. So you're welcome to take a pause quick of the video here to understand white flies in general as well as their life cycle a little bit more. Keep in mind that some species of white fly though can transmit viral diseases to certain crops and have a broad host range and colonize over 500 plant species. So because of this, they are an insect of concern, uh, not only for the physical damage that they can do, but also the uh, vectoring they can do for other diseases. They can go through six stages in, in about three weeks, depending on the temperature, and that's what you will find that those temperatures are important uh, for determining the rate of spread or uh, increase in population. One female can lay up to 600 eggs in her lifetime, so it doesn't take very many to start a large population. Now there's different species actually of white fly. Um, as we look at them here, they all are flies that are the color white, but this gives you, if you're seeing something that doesn't quite match this exactly, maybe you have a silver leaf or maybe a banded winged uh, white fly there. But again, all methods of control would generally be the same here. This just gives you a little bit more details of some of the specific species you might be identifying in your operation. Now getting to those very important beneficial insects. So this one is um, uh, Aeromonychus arimicus, and this is a tiny wasp that lays eggs under the white fly larvae or pupae, kind of what they look like. Their life cycle takes about three weeks uh, to complete there. Um, so keep that in mind as well, as well as the rates, contact any of the areas you might be looking at purchasing these from uh, for some more information on the rates. But this gives you a little bit more information here. The adults also kill white flies by feeding on them. Uh, so a really great um, target for white flies if you have them in your growing operation. 
Another species you might be using is in Incursia, which is a tiny uh, wasp there. Their life cycle takes about three and a half weeks uh, to complete. They parasitize hosts and turn into black or brownish cases. They, um, these adult Incarcia have a black or brown head and thorax and a yellow abdomen. Here, if you're looking at, if you spread them out and then start to inspect your plants, maybe you hopefully you'll see a couple of them um, as far as hopefully to look out for the good, good beneficial insects. So how do they go about applying these? Well, the application is parasitic wasps was achieved by hanging cardboard strips, which contain the parasitized white fly pupae, as you can see right here. Hung right there on the plants, goes right over some of the stems or some of the petioles. There it makes it really easy to apply and really easy to go through even a large operation. So since this was a study, let's look at some of their numbers. There was a slight delay in the overall reduction in numbers, but by week nine, there was only an average of four white flies per plant for the beneficial insect treatment compared to over 70 in the control plants. So just make note of that slight delay in reduction. Um, don't think that if there's a slight delay, you're not gonna get that final you know, treatment that you want. Um, sometimes it just takes a little bit longer with some of the beneficial insects here. So again, we can see slight delay, but you know there was a reduction even from week three to week five, uh, even though not significantly statistically different, but you could see week seven and week nine is where you really saw those beneficial insects really start to reduce those numbers in an effective way. So if you're applying beneficial insects, don't expect that quick next day uh, knockdown, but the long-term benefits by this study will certainly be there. And this uh, study did look at some other uh, populations of um, insects and some other beneficials. You're welcome to check out other videos on this channel as well. But a continuous reduction of all pest species was observed throughout the experiment, approaching the zero plant value. This I kind of show in the graph, uh, okay, right up here, you know, maybe not reaching zero, but definitely approaching that zero level there is a great thing. So uh, are those beneficial insects worth it? Well, in short, yes. Study results indicate that beneficial insects could control pest populations up to 100%. Pest management with natural enemies is a promising, very effective, safe method of plant protection for applicator as well. But keep in mind, if you are considering these, which again, hopefully you are, proper pest identification is very important since this will determine the exact beneficial insect to be used. You wanna make sure those species match up. This also requires frequent scouting. Timing and rate, of beneficial insects are also important. That's where I would recommend you consult the people you're even purchasing these insects from. Your key part is to have proper identification so you ensure you're purchasing the right insects that will do an effective job in an environmentally sustainable way.